One of the reasons for debate is to exercise the mind, not only to refine the idea, but to give you mental muscle. And if there was ever a time we needed mental muscle, it's going to be moving into the 21st century because ideologies are going to be coming at us from all directions. Some from the lower part of life, some from the higher inspirational part of life. But ideologies are going to be in clash. Some will be in concert to help build a good world, but some are going to be in conflict. But whether ideas are in concert or in conflict, you've got to have the dynamic mental muscle yourself to be able to, number one, get it, number two, sort it out, and number three, state your opinion clearly. We could get into the great debate, would there be positive without negative? Here's my best answer. It doesn't seem like it. Would there be good without evil? It doesn't seem like it. Would there be life without death? It doesn't seem like it. It seems like it takes both to make a scenario. Would there be health without illness? It doesn't seem like it. Why is health always challenged? It seems like it's meant to be that way. Would there be light without darkness? It doesn't seem like it. Would there be winning without losing? You say, well, no, it doesn't seem like it. It wouldn't make sense. You couldn't win if you couldn't lose. Life and death. Somebody asked me once about life. What's your definition? I said, life is the struggle to keep death at a respectable distance. <laughs> death seems to want to move in prematurely, prematurely. You got to push back, push back, push back. Have as long a life as you possibly can. But you got to push. Why? Because the push is on. Illness is out to push your health into a small corner. You got to make sure your health disciplines are out to push your illnesses into a small corner. Somebody's going to push somebody. Here's the best way I can describe life in its human experience, best as I can describe it. Opposites in conflict, and we're caught in the middle. Opposites vying for the territory. And the middle part of that experience is of opposites vying for the territory is what we call a glorious possibility for human existence and experience. It makes a scenario. Wouldn't be a scenario without it. Good without evil. Wouldn't make sense. So here's what we must do. Learn to embrace both. You got to drink from both cups. The ancient prophet said there's a time to laugh. That's not the end of it. Just keep on laughing. No. Said there's a time to what? Cry. You got to wish for the full range of human experience. The whole drama in all of its clash and conflict pushing against each other for the territory. Guess where illness is right now in your life? Pushing on the outer edges of your health plan, looking for a weak spot. And if it finds it, it'll muscle in. And if you don't put up some defense, it'll take over. It's called the scenario. But you couldn't win if you couldn't lose. You couldn't triumph if there was no risk. That's what life is all about, accepting this clash of opposites in conflict and embracing it. Once you understand it, you'll thrill to the full range of human experience. Drink from both cups. What if you went to listen to a symphony orchestra and the symphony only played little happy high notes, little happy high notes, little happy high notes all evening? How much of that could you take? No one would stay. Don't you want to hear the crash of the cymbals that scares you to death? The music that drags you down into the tragedy of life as well as the triumph? And the answer is yes. Play me the whole orchestra. Don't leave any of it out. Most of the music of the world is written in the minor key. The key of pathos and sadness and mystery and wonder. You can't shrug that off. You've got to experience it. That's what makes a scenario. Otherwise, there is no scenario. There is no life. That's why we need the negative to alarm us. Somebody that's been down the road, the bridge is out. The guy has a colossal wreck, manages to survive, is coming back up the road. We're speeding down the road. He flags us down. And he says, don't go down this road any further. The bridge is out. You can't say, I'm not into that negative stuff. Mind your own business and head on down the road. No. No. Wouldn't you take a look at this guy that looks like he's been in a wreck and say, hey, I better take it easy. I better not go down this road. Somebody's been down this road and had a disaster, shouldn't I? Say, let me take their advice. Be careful headed down this road. So that's what I'm asking you to do. Evaluate. We need the full range, the full menu of idea on the negative side as well as the positive side. We need books that give us the look at both good and evil. Key. You need a book on Gandhi and you need a book on Hitler. 
One to show you how high and the other one to show you how low. One to admire and the other one to despise. So that we be not tempted to follow the evil road, though it may taste good in the beginning. Power sometimes tastes good in the beginning. But the ancient prophet said sometimes what tastes good in the mouth turns bitter in the belly. Later on, a well-balanced library of the negative and the positive. If your mind is searching through that kind of stuff, trying to come up with what you think is right with a little bit of refinement, now it'll benefit you. You've got to be healthy-minded.